Great. So it's a pleasure to be with you guys. I'm going to talk about temporal tables and how to increment uh, incremental models efficiency using temporal tables. And I want to tell you a little bit about myself before I'm visiting from the south, from Idaho, from the PSB, our overlords of ASML, and of course, a lot, a lot of cows. So uh, we moved to the Netherlands last year with my wife. She works in ASML, our kind overlords. And uh, then uh, we started um, uh, working both in the data space. After a while, I met some people in Teradata, and I was able to join Teradata as a developer advocate in a very interesting juncture for Teradata because uh, we were starting a relationship with DBT, which is a strategic from our product department perspective. And uh, it was uh, the time to introduce a lot of our customers that were not aware about DBT to DBT and what it, why it is a great tool for uh, developing pipelines. On the personal side, uh, I love uh, skateboarding, which is there. And uh, I'm kind of double the age of the kids that are usually skateboarding in Inove, but that's okay. I'm the grandpa of the skate park. And you can find me in a LinkedIn, in Twitter, there, and also in our Slack group and DBT third data and local Netherlands. Uh, so that uh, without further ado, let's start. Uh, we are going to start my talk talking, brushing a little bit about inter incremental models. I think that's a topic that is quite uh, common and very familiar for everyone here. So I will just brush up a little bit of concepts there just as an introduction. Then talking about temporal tables, that uh, is not really implemented in the same way according to what is the data warehouse that you're working with. So in Teradata, it works in some way. In a SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server, it works in a different way. And then you have a big query. As long as I know they don't have it natively, you have to kind of like do it manually. And uh, of course, you have the time travel features in the Snowflake and data breaks. So uh, that are kind of equivalent. And uh, I will talk a little bit of why this topic came to our radar in Teradata, specifically my team, the product team, and the uh, service engineering and a demo that we built to illustrate this concept to some customers and make them adopt DVT on top of some uh, data warehouses that they have. And then at the end, kind of like, how do, you, how do you do something similar to what we have in this demo if you don't have temporal tables in your uh, data warehouse? So of course, there's a way to do that as well. So, so, Incremental models, let's brush up a little bit. So basically, incremental models are a, a special type of materializations where uh, the materialization is a table, but you are uh, defining certain configurations in order the table is not teared down and rebuilt again in every DBT run, right? That, that's the default behavior. In incremental models, basically, you can define what data you are going to bring in the model materialization in the table in subsequent runs. Oh, sorry. That's a good one. Sure. Let's see. Is it better right now? Sorry. Yeah, it depends. It depends. Like, usually seeing my face is not a very good angle anyway, but whatever. So, uh, yeah. So, basically, uh, that's uh, the default behavior is basically that they, the materializations are teared down and they basically rebuilt again in each run. And incremental models allow you to choose what data you actually want to bring in subsequent materializations according to certain uh, condition that you put there inside the ease incremental macro. Of course, since you are not starting with a totally empty model materialization, you have to deal with data that is already in your table or in your materialization, and then you can deal with it in different ways. You can just append which is the default behavior, or you can delete, plus insert, or merge, basically, which are the, the strategies. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about temporal tables. <laughs> and then we bring it uh, to where this kind of, uh, like, you find a confluence between these two topics. So basically, temporal tables are a way of adding metadata to a table 
that will uh, be used for particularly two use cases in the case of a Teradata warehouse. Uh, our temporal tables are used to define what is the business validity of a row. That means that you can define, for example, in a subscription, what is the, per the period that that subscription was uh, uh, valid. And uh, that could be defined even in the future when you define the, the new row. And uh, basically, uh, when you add a new period on the same subscription, you can basically update that metadata. And you do it, uh, you define the start, but the end of the subscription is basically, or the end of the validity is basically when you introduce a new record for that same row in the primary key, right? So business validity. That one is quite specific to Teradata. As far as I know, SQL Server doesn't have that type of, uh, of uh, temporal table. They have only the second one, which is uh, transaction time. So that's not from a business perspective. That's from an update perspective. And what it does uh, in this kind of temporal table is that you track when a record for a specific uh, primary key was updated. And then basically, you don't have to manage any of those metadata the engine does it for you. So there's an update, the engine will tell you, okay, when it was updated and stuff like that. And this allows you to kind of like do time travel type features to go back to see how the data set was in a specific period, either from the data validity, uh, from business validity or from the data, a, a transactional a data perspective. We have here, a little bit of an example on how to you define it in third data uh, in a third data data warehouse. As mentioned, this really depends on what is your engine. And if you are in another engine, you might have access only to a transactional one. So let's move ahead. So as you remember, in, in incremental models, you define what, are the, what is the condition for the new data to be added to the model, right? Since we have this temporal table, specifically the transaction one for the example that we built, but it can be also based on validity, you can choose that uh, in a where statement inside your ease incremental macro, you can define that you want data that was updated after certain specific date. And you define that very easily on Jinja in, the, in your model definition. And that way you can just ensure that you, the data that you're bringing to your model in the subsequent runs is only data that was added or updated after the previous run that you made. So this was specifically um, attractive because we have this customer that we were introducing to DBT. It's a very traditional industry. It was manufacturing. The data look a little bit like this. Of course, that's not the real okay. data warehouse. It was much bigger but I cannot disclose the schema. And uh, they have certain uh, temporal, temporal tables already there. And we basically introduced DBT to them and told them like, hey, instead of the store procedures that you have right now for kind of like moving the data around in your pipeline, you can use DBT, which is going to be more modular and maybe give you some testing and maintainability capabilities that you currently have in your store procedures, but maybe it's more difficult to do. And uh, basically, uh, we leverage this temporal table capability to build the incremental models in a way that was sounded more attractive, attractive to them because their data sets were huge. And uh, basically, what I will show is that sample. It's a very simple sample. It's a little bit like uh, Jaffle Shop 2.1, <laughs> if, if you want. So it's Jaffle, Jaffle Shop with temporal tables. But it's very simple. So of course, uh, there is the the um, repo for the demo that we built that's uh, available for anyone to play with. And uh, the other part that's quite exciting to us in our company as, as this push is coming to kind of like uh, partner with DBT and, and make the brand more, uh, let's call it more, uh, more accessible to developers uh, from all works of life. You don't need to be in your company to kind of like have access to the to the actual implementation or the cloud account. Uh, we have this uh, experience at teradata.com where you can access a Teradata database uh, totally online without having to uh, do any type of payment or any subscription uh, whatsoever. 
just for testing and trying and, and see how it works. And you can just scan this QR code as well, and that will bring you to the to the uh, website. So I will run the demo now. Let's see how we are going on time. Yeah, I think I have still nice time to run the demo. So I will go to my uh, instance of the data warehouse first. I will log in. And I will start it. So this is the way it looks. As I mentioned, it's totally web-based. And I will load also the client that I usually launch when I want to connect to the warehouse. And of course, our good friend Visual Studio Code, where I will show you the models, but the models are very, very easily uh, understandable. So what this is, is basically, it's a, it's a mock company, of course, it's called Teddy Retailers, and they have um, certain sources and that are uh, sources for orders, customers, and stuff like that, and we are going to try to modify that, uh, that uh, normalized schema into a dimensional data set. Oh, sure. I always forget that. And can somebody remind me what are the, the, the shortcuts? Because I kind of forgot. Shift, Shift Plus, right? Control Shift Plus, yeah. yeah. OK, eh, too much. OK, I guess that's better. So uh, as a first step, I will just create the data. So I will create the DB first. and load the data. So I created the DB, and then I will create the data, and then I show you the models. So what I'm creating here, creating here is the sources. So it's just the, we have products, we have uh, the customers, we have the orders. And then we have the order products, which basically link what products have been ordered in each order. Let me just copy this, and then I load it into the database. All of this data for anyone that's running the model is actually hosted in the cloud uh, as CSVs, and uh, then basically these uh, these uh, very simple uh, queries will just load the data into your database. So it's in object storage directed to the B loading. OK, so we have the initial data. And basically, the two models that are applying the temporal table concepts are the ones that are defining the temporal tables here. So we are altering the table of orders to add a duration that tells us when the data is actually to track the, the transactions on the data. So it's the as transaction time. And it's adding this period, which is two dates, basically. So it has a begin and an end of the transaction. And uh, also, we are doing the same in the source or the products. Those are the two uh, sources that ha have these temporal table capabilities. Now, regarding the models, the models are very simple. But these models that are relying on the temporal table capabilities have this um, uh, characteristic. We have the is incremental macro here. And then basically, we are selecting only the ones, uh, only the rows that were updated after our last DBT run. So we just bring that into our model. So of course, at the beginning, it's not incremental. So it's not going to actually do uh, anything special. Let's do DBT debug just to make sure that everything is connected properly. <laughs> It has happened to me before <laughs> in live demos. <laughs> so everything's connecting. And then let's do the to run. And then it's running all the models.
and then, then just to take a snapshot of the um, orders status table right now. So let's see, this is already the materialization of that model. We are just going to get some statistics, so I don't have to run any query here just to check the records. I think there should be 858 right now. Now let's bring some updates to our data. And this update is basically just altering the status of some of the orders and adding a new order only. So basically that's it. And I think I didn't run it properly. Okay, then we do, after that update, we do another db to run. This is actually the incremental run. And in this uh, case, then our is incremental is happening here. So it's picking from the source only the data that was updated, not the entire source uh, in its full extent. Now let's go to the statistics again, which is just a formality to the all orders. And this getting the statistics also, of course, it depends on the what data uh, warehouse you have is gonna be different. Uh, just basically right now we have a 162 uh, where we add the new data. So it's a very simple example, but I think it's quite useful. And if you have, if your data warehouse supports temporary tables, then you can just migrate to use incremental models instead of the regular plain vanilla ones. And that will actually improve your efficiency because you are not turning down everything, which you might be already doing, but just an idea. Now, as a, la uh, as a last point, what happens if your sources are not temporary tables, then snap. So basically you just have to create a snapshot and do it manually, basically just to mimic what temporal tables do with any other engine, with BigQuery, basically you could do this. Okay, thank you very much guys, and uh, hope to see you around, and hope that I get permission from the manager to come to Amsterdam more often to the meetups. Um, by the manager, I mean my wife. <laughs> see you then. <laughs>